Hey YouTube people, what if I told you there was a special trick on your Surface Pro device that got you three to four times the performance with minimal loss in quality and visuals? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it today. We all love the Surface Pro. It's got this quirky three to aspect ratio, um, but that three to aspect ratio can get in our way a little bit. Um, the Surface Pro latest generations are 2880 pixels wide by 1920 pixels tall. Now, if you're used to gaming on a traditional 16-9 aspect ratio monitor, if you're playing at 4K and it's going very slow, you drop it down to 1440p. And if that's going uh, pretty slow for you, you drop that down to 1080p and, by, and down to 720p. And when you do that, those are actually all the same 16-9 aspect ratio. So when you're dropping those down, uh, you're actually not running into many problems at all. So while Microsoft has given us some really great displays on recent Surface Pros, uh, we have a really nice OLED, a really nice LCD on the current generation. However, what they've failed to do is actually give us three to aspect ratio resolutions as options in Windows with the graphics driver. Blows my brain that they didn't include this. Um, however, uh, I will show you a tweak and a hack to be able to get into the elusive 1440 by 960 resolution. Now I know what you're saying, you're probably saying uh, what's so special about that resolution. Well for the Surface Pro, you're taking the 2880 pixels wide, divide that by two, what's the number? 1440. Take the 1920 tall, divide that in half, what's the number? 960. 1440 by 960 is exactly uh, one quarter of the resolution of the display. So what's so special about this? Well, if you have four pixels together like this, and then uh, you turn those four pixels into one giant pixel, that's called pixel doubling. And the benefit of that is you basically have to push one pixel for every four pixels that you have to push in the past. Your aspect ratio does not change and the uh, perceived clarity of the image is not reduced nearly as much as it would if you reduced it down to something like 1080p or 720p on a 3-2 aspect ratio. Because what you run into, you yes, you can run and you should lower your resolution from 2880 by 1921 playing games, but if you change it to 1080p, you're either going to stretch the image and it will look weird, people will look skinny, or you'll have black bars on the top and bottom making your effective screen much smaller than it would be otherwise. So just a note, if you don't have a Surface Pro Intel version and you have a Snapdragon version, I have a couple tips for you uh, that that are relevant, but you won't be able to get into this special resolution on a Snapdragon Surface Pro. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just not something that's possible right now with the current Snapdragon drivers. Now, if you have a Surface Laptop Studio, you have a 2400 wide by 1600 tall display, and your ideal resolution to get pixel doubling will be 1200 by 800. Believe it or not, Microsoft didn't include that resolution either on your Surface Laptop Studio. Uh, so you can use the same tricks I'll show you uh, on any of those devices. You just want to get the right, uh, divide your pixels in half to get the right pixel doubling. So how do we pull this off? Well, I'll include links in the description to the programs we're going to use, um, but these special programs will help us establish profiles for the correct resolutions for pixel doubling on a 3-2 display. And the difference can be drastic. Let's get started. Okay, so now that we've established that to, in order to pixel double our 2880 by 1920 surface screen, we need to get a 1440 by 960 resolution which we're going to do using a utility called Custom Resolution Utility. 
It's very utilitarian. It is what it says. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open this up. And once you're in here, uh, you want to go to your detailed resolutions page and you won't have an entry in here. I've already done this, but you're going to click add. And um, once you click add, you're going to get a screen that looks exactly like this. Your best friend here is going to be setting this to automatic PC first. And then all you have to enter is 1440, 960 and 120 as your refresh rate. Click OK and then click OK down here. Now at this point, you're going to want to reboot your machine. Alternatively, you can run this, which restarts the driver, but I just like to do a full reboot just so it doesn't, you know, screw anything up. But once you do that, when you uh, go into your display settings, you're going to have the option for a 1440 by 960 which is exactly going to pixel double your screen up. And um, let's go ahead and click that. And you can see that you almost cannot tell the difference. I mean, obviously you're looking at this in a video, but the pixels match so perfectly that uh, while you there'll be a little bit of clarity loss in general, uh, 1440 by 960 is still pretty high. It's almost almost 1080p anyways. And on a 13 inch screen, it still looks quite sharp. And here is literally the screen <laughs> at both resolutions showing the background. And it's almost indistinguishable. Uh, in fact, it, it really looks quite close to each other and we'll look at some more comparisons in our game testing in a minute i mean it's not too bad to have to right click go to display settings and then go find your resolution and then scan up the list and change it back and forth um but there's an easier way to do it and that's in the form of this tool right here called HRC. This is Hotkey Resolution Changer. And there will be a link in the description for that as well. When you run that, you get a little icon in the uh, screen here. And what this will let us do is select the resolution we want with a particular hotkey. So I've used in Control Shift I to be full resolution 120. And you can just pick your resolution there. And obviously you wouldn't want to run this one until you've done the custom resolution utility. Um, but then the next hotkey that I use is control shift K and I have that set it to the 1440 by 960. So with that set up, I'll just minimize it to the tray. Now, if I hit control shift I, which I'm going to do right now, we're now high resolution. And if I hit control shift K, it now goes into the pixel double resolution, which is a very quick adjustment. Let's go back into the highest. There we go. And let's go into the pixel doubling mode. It's very quick. Control Shift I, Control Shift K. That's the way I like to have it set up. But what net effect does that have for us? Well, in order to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into the high resolution mode and I'm going to show you some gameplay. Okay, so here we are in uh, Genshin Impact and we're at that 2880 by 1920 full screen. And let's go ahead and put it into high. And now sitting here in this field, we are getting 34 frames a second. And it's a, not bad, especially for an iGPU at this resolution and at the highest setting. So not horrible, but let's close out of the game now and go back in at that 1440 by 960 resolution and see what our frame rate looks like. Okay, so now we're in this field and we're running at 100 frames per second, very, very smooth. 
Um, and in fact, if you turn the shadows down, you can lock it out at 120 frames a second. But apples to apples, exact same high settings, but now at the 1440p, the, you can get massive improvement in frame rates. And the coolest thing is there's, because of the pixel doubling, uh, and the fact that it's an OLED screen, if you've got the LCD screen, the pixel doubling, uh, there's another trick we can use that I'll show you in a second. If you're on the OLED, I wouldn't even bother to do the trick that I was about, that I'll show for the LCD because the OLED pixel array is not square anyways. So because of that fact, it really masks the resolution or the little bit loss in clarity. I'll show some up close pictures in a second through a microscope of the screen. But uh, the reality of it is, is switching to this resolution provides a minimal loss in clarity for almost three times the frame rate. So I really like gaming at this resolution, um, especially on that 3-2 screen the height of that 3-2 screen that it has, if you compared, so this 13-inch screen, if you compared that to a 16-9 uh, screen, it would actually have the height of a much larger display. So while you, the, your sides are shrunken, the height of this display is actually quite large. Um, probably, and I'll do the math and, and put it on the screen there, but it basically would be the equivalent of a 14 or 15 inch screen if it were a 16.9 at the same height. So it actually appears much bigger in person when you're playing uh, on these type of screens. And if you can maximize uh, that clarity and aspect ratio, because I mean, you you can you can go other routes and try to uh, basically you know, change to, I think there's a, there's probably a 1600 by 900 or a 1600 by 1200 resolution, which is 1610, not 32. And what you end up with is a stretch display, which makes it uh, not ideal because then you are not uh, seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. So yeah, pixel doubling is great, especially on the OLED because it masks the edges anyways with the OLED. So you you really don't have to do integer scaling, which I'm gonna show you now if you have an LCD. So let's look at that really quick. So massive uptick in frame rate. And Lunar Lake is powerful enough to really play games at 120 frames a second at that resolution. So it's actually really cool. I mean, it doesn't get much better than a 120 Hertz OLED display at 120 when the game's actually rendering at 120. Um, I mean, obviously every game doesn't get there, but you can get pretty close. And And if you've been playing at the, at the 2880 by 1920, that's a huge amount of pixels to try to push on an iGPU. So doing this is, is really important um, if you want to get smooth gameplay and have it be the right aspect ratio. So let's look at the pixel doubling options that you may want to do if you have the LCD screen. So what you'd want to do for that is you want to go to display and you want to change the display scaling to retro scaling and you want to change the scaling method to integer. Now, if you do that, okay, so if you enable integer scaling, um, what you're gonna see is the pixels on an LCD won't try to alias, I don't know if that's the right term, but uh, basically everything will look much clearer around the edges. Um, I can't really show you that in practice because this is an OLED screen, but your menu system, if you use that integer scaling, especially will look much sharper. Um, even when you're at this uh, 1440 by 960 resolution, because it will literally take four pixels and turn them into one pixel without uh, any fuzziness. So the integer scaling uh, is a great solution for those of you on LCD, because it's going to make things look really sharp, especially your 
menus. And, and frankly, some people like the way that it looks and you get higher frame rate uh, on a lot of games. Okay, so as promised, we are looking at the screen through a microscope right now, by the way. So while you may see some drastic differences, uh, keep in mind we are zoomed in quite far. Um, but that said, especially kind of like the landscape, uh, the rock doesn't really look too much different than the full resolution. You can see more detail in the trees and leaves especially. Uh, however, it looks pretty good and the uptick in performance I think is worth it. So this is probably the most drastic difference I would say. Uh, when you're looking at a lot of detail on a character, you can see that uh, some of the, it looks a little slightly blurred but the nice thing about the OLED display is uh, it actually doesn't show hard edges of pixels because of the way the screen sub-pixel is aligned. But still, uh, the full resolution does look better, but we are getting three or four times the frame rate uh, by using this pixel doubling. And again, this is probably a pretty drastic difference as well, especially if you look at the stone monument on the left. That's, to my eye, that is the biggest difference, the sharpness there. But again, when you're just playing this game, and, and again, we are zoomed in. These are far objects in the distance. You don't notice it, especially on a 13-inch display. And again, the performance uplift is totally worth it. And you get the right aspect ratio. That's what you want. Okay, hopefully with this, you Surface Pro and Surface device users will be gaming in much higher frame rates and without losing clarity or being in the wrong aspect ratio that warps your, your visual quality. So if this video has helped you, be sure to subscribe. Lots of cool videos on the channel, not necessarily related to Surface. And these tips do apply to any other device that you might be using. Um, also, if you want to improve performance on your Surface Pro or just keep it cooler and running, you know, you don't want the battery heating up as much, pick up one of the Seabutters Tech Performance fans. These fans hook right on the back of the device and keep things cool for you, which can in some cases increase your performance. Uh, check the channel for videos on that. But uh, these fans are really nice and sold at store.cbutters.tech. And again, if I've helped you out with this video, don't be afraid to uh, pick up something you need on Amazon using the link in the description. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. Love to hear your comments below. Thanks.